Hello and welcome to this video on 11th grade biology. We are doing um, classification of the plant kingdom. And this is Preetinder Kaur and if you want to watch more videos on uh, the same topics or related topics, you can visit perfect-course.com and please don't forget to share and like us at Facebook. And if you have any suggestions or queries, you can mail us at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So we have been doing the plant kingdom classification and so far we've discussed five categories of plants. We have done about algae, we have discussed pteridophytes, and apart from that bryophytes. And the previous video that you should have watched was in, on gymnosperms. So we did that gymnosperms are called so because of the term gymno that means naked and sperm means seed. So naked seed that means there is no covering outside the ovule and it develops just like that exposed. The next thing that we have to do is angiosperms. Now unlike gymnosperms in angiosperms there is a specialized organ that helps to cover the seed while it is developing and that organ is known as a fruit uh, not a fruit sorry flower so after the fertilization that flower develops into the fruit so that is basically the difference between angiosperms and gymnosperms angiosperms have flowers which are then converted into fruits so the seeds are enclosed and it's an exceptionally large group of plants that occur in so many different kinds of habitats and the size range is also immense it can be from almost microscopic wolfia to really big huge trees. Uh, for example, eucalyptus which can easily grow, um, it, it can easily exceed 100 meters in length. But on the other hand, we also saw this kind of variety in gymnosperms where the tallest um, trees were sequoia. Sequoia is the redwood giant tree and that is actually a gymnosperm. Even conifers, they are gymnosperms. Angiosperms also have immense variety. Now, angiosperms are divided into two. They are divided into dicotyledons and monocotyledons. So basically, we call them dicots and monocots. Monocots basically means um, one cotyledon and dicots means two cotyledons in their seeds. And in this case, it's only one cotyledon in the seed. So we'll be discussing more about this, but you should know that the male sex organ in the flower is the stamen. That is a characteristic of all angiosperms. And each stamen has a filament with an anther at the tip. So this is the anther, and this is the filament or the stalk like structure. Now, the anthers after meiosis they give pollen grains. After meiosis, they result in pollen grains. The female sex organ is the pistil or the carpel. And the pistil has an ovary that contains one or many ovules. Containing one or more ovules. Within ovules, you have the female gametophytes called the embryo sacs. Embryo sac formation is from meiosis just like in this case, not mitosis, it is meiosis. So each of the cells of an embryo sac is haploid because it's meiosis, not diploid. So that is basically the division of the flower. The male part called the stamen, it has anther and the filament. In the anther through meiosis, pollen grains are produced. And the female part is known as pistil or carpel that houses the ovary that can have one or more ovules. And through meiosis, there is development of embryo sacs that are haploid. Now, each embryo sac 
has a few components. It has a three-celled egg apparatus. That means it has one egg cell, two synergids, plus it has three antipodal cells, plus two polar nuclei. So this is called an egg apparatus. So one egg cell with two synergids and three antipodal cells and two polar nuclei. Now these polar nuclei are the ones that are eventually going to uh, combine together to form a diploid secondary nucleus. Now remember right now they are haploid because they have been produced by meiosis. Both of them will actually fuse and form the secondary nucleus later. So pollen grain after it gets dispersed from the anthers they are carried by different uh, agencies to the end of this pistil which is called a stigma that is the opening of the pistil till that they go and this process of the anthers um, sending their pollen grains and pollen grains reaching the stigma this entire process is known as pollination. So what we are going to do next is the entire life cycle of an angiosperm uh, explained in the form of a diagram. So the first stage that you start with is a sporophyte. And remember what we are doing, we are doing life cycle of an angiosperm. Alright, so sporophyte, it contains two different parts. It contains the stigma, which is going to be the opening, and it also contains uh, the anther. Okay, so the sporophyte has the stigma and the anther, which is the male, and stigma is the female. Now, stigma is in this form. Let me draw a little rough diagram and so this is how it's going to look like. This part over here, it's the ovary and this part over here, it's called the style and this part is the stigma. This is where the pollen grains are going to get attached and pollen grains are going to be there in the tip of this anther that is uh, the filament and this is the anther. So this helps to form the microsporangium. And this further gives rise to microspores. These microspores further form a combined microspore, a little group called pollen grain. And remember the process of cell division is meiosis throughout. Now this gives rise to the male gametophyte. Now in the meantime, Let's see what happens to the ovary. The ovary has a megasporangium, which is called an ovule. This further combines with the male gametophyte and they produce the egg. This egg further gets produced into a zygote. This zygote gets in the form of an embryo. So remember this is a fertilized egg. First there is just going to be a simple egg. Then fertilization will take place. Fertilized egg leads to zygote. Zygote leads to embryo. And the embryo will lead to the next generation of sporophytes. So that is the process. So sporophyte develops into the stigma and the anther. The anther slowly gives rise to the male gametophyte. The stigma gives rise to the egg. Both of them fuse and they are all haploid. So right now the fertilized egg is going to be diploid. So until now everything is haploid. And then diploid it gives rise to embryo that develops into a new sporophyte. So sporophyte is also diploid in its composition. So that is the life cycle of an angiosperm. Now in case of plants, especially in angiosperms, 
both the haploid and the diploid cells they have the ability to divide by mitosis which is different from meiosis this ability leads to formation of different kinds of plants it can be a haploid plant or it can be a diploid plant so on the basis of that we are going to do three different kinds of uh, life cycles so those are going to be haplontic diplontic and haplodiplontic so haplontic diplontic and haplodiplontic depending on how the division is taking place so let's start with the haplontic so let's start with a gametophyte now gametophyte is always haploid that is it contains only half of the chromosome so let's label it as n through the process of gametogenesis that means formation of gametes this gives rise to zygote and two gametes will meet so through syngamy which is the fusion of two different gametes you are going to have a diploid zygote that is going to have 2n this is further going to undergo meiosis and that is going to lead to many spores which are going to be of n composition and those spores will further lead to gametophytes so that is how the haplontic cycle takes place how the diplontic takes place is you start with a sporophyte which is going to be 2n in this case in diplontic one this will lead to meiosis this meiosis is going to give off gametophytes that are going to be haploid so n and this will lead to gametogenesis and then there is going to be syngamy that is combination of the gametes that is going to lead to a zygote which is going to be 2n in this case and this 2n zygote leads to the sporophyte which is also 2n so one thing you can notice the difference between haplontic and diplontic is that in haplontic zygote undergoes meiosis to form the spores in this zygote directly leads to a sporophyte and then meiosis is done to form the gametophyte so that is one major area of difference the next kind is the haplodiplontic so let's start with the gametophyte which is um, n in this case gametophyte is right now haploid it leads to gametogenesis that means formation of the gametes then there is syngamy so in syngamy two different gametes meet each other so let me put an extra arrow in all of these wherever syngamy takes place after syngamy it results in a zygote that is obviously going to be 2n a zygote if you see everywhere it is going to be 2n in this case also in this case also in this case because it is syngamy so that means two different gametes are meeting this zygote helps in formation of sporophyte which is obviously going to be 2n this is going to undergo meiosis through meiosis it's going to form spores which are obviously going to be n and now the gametophyte will also be n so one thing you can observe in this haplodiplontic there are going to be some features that are common to haploid and uh, the haplontic and some features that are going to be common to the diplontic for instance look at this sporophyte uh, causing meiosis causing uh, gametophytes this process from zygote till gametophyte this process matches diplontic whereas this process that a gametophyte with n leads to gametogenesis leads to syngamy leads to a 2n zygote this entire process 
this is haplontic so that is the combination of haplontic and diplontic so you get haplo diplontic the examples of haplontic are many kinds of algae such as volvox spirogyra and even some species of chlamydomonas examples of diplontic include um, an algae called fucus and lots of uh, seed bearing plants in fact all seed bearing plants all gymnosperms and angiosperms they follow this pattern with some kind of variations all the gymnosperms and the angiosperms follow this pattern coming to haplodiplontic who is going to be haplodiplontic is going to be bryophytes and pteridophytes they are going to be haplodiplontic the only difference between them is going to be what is going to be uh, the dominant phase for some it's going to be the sporophyte for some it's going to be the gametophyte and usually gametophyte is going to be haploid like in this case n and the sporophyte is going to be diploid which is 2n so sporophyte is diploid it is usually the photosynthetic vascular plant body and uh, pteridophytes exhibit this pattern pteridophytes so let me just write ter and bryophytes show the gametophyte as the dominant phase that is haploid and it is a thalloid thalloid or an erect phase haploid gametophyte and sometimes it's a multicellular sporophyte or it can be partially dependent on the gametophyte as well so that is all about the plant kingdom that you need to know right now at this grade level uh, so so far what we have done is we have done the different kinds of plants that are there so in the plant kingdom we have discussed the five types we have discussed algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and in this video we have just discussed the angiosperms along with all this uh, classification we have also done the three kinds of uh, fertilization that take place or the three kinds of life cycles that is diplontic which is in case of most of the gymnosperms angiosperms and some algae and we have done the haplontic which is mostly in case of algae and we have also done the haplodiplontic which is in case of bryophytes and pteridophytes the only difference between bryophytes and pteridophytes is the dominant phase so that's all in this video and the next thing that we have to do is classification in the animal kingdom so keep watching and keep sharing thank you so much for watching